Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Tecton Zoo, episode six. I hope you're all doing good today. I'm ZSH Plays, and today we are going to be building a habitat for one of my favorite animals, the Binturong. So we are back in the forest, and we're going to build this next to the flamingo habitat that we built last week. Uh, so let's get straight into it. So the concept for this build is that it is going to be inspired by the shape of the Binturong's distinctive ear tufts, which are just crazy, uh, and I love them. So I wanted to build, uh, I wanted to incorporate that into the uh, shape of the habitat, which is a bit tricky because it's not the most normal of shapes. Uh, it took me a while to get there, uh, but I did in the end, as usual. Uh, so I want to talk a bit about Binturongs, first of all. Um, they are, like I say, one of my favorite animals. I'd never even heard of them until a few years ago. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to Le Menagerie de Jean de Plante in Paris, um, and uh, which is an amazing zoo, by the way, if you ever get the chance to go there. I think it's the second oldest zoo in the world, and they've done an amazing job of keeping the majority of the, the beautiful buildings from you know, 150, 200 years ago. I think it was 1779 that it opened or, or that they, they built it um, and they essentially from what I can from what I can tell from walking around there it looks like they've sort of gutted the inside of the buildings but left all the facades there so as you walk around it you know it looks like you're in a zoo in the in the 18th century but inside each enclosure is actually you know good quality habitats modern habitats for the animals uh, for the most part uh, and it's a pretty amazing zoo um, so as I was walking around I saw uh, an enclosure that was like a um, sort of like a bowl descending into the ground and there was just a sign on it saying Binturong and I had no idea what it meant I thought it was um, thought it was you know like the the common French name for an animal that I wasn't familiar with so I was wondering what animal the French called a, a Binturong so I looked into the enclosure and I was just like, what the hell is that? And there was just a, a little bundle of, you know, maybe four, four or so binturongs asleep on this, this raised platform in the middle of the enclosure. And I realized that it wasn't the, the French term for, for an animal I knew. It was a, an entire animal that I'd never heard of. Uh, so I've been a big fan of them ever since then. This enclosure is slightly influenced by that enclosure of the menagerie. Um, it's a depression in the middle. Um, with the idea being because Bintrongs love to climb, spend, spend most of their time in the trees. Um, I've made, as they did in the, the menagerie, I've made the inside of the enclosure uh, a sort of a pit. Um, and then with loads and loads of climbing for them in the enclosure so that when they climb, they're at the eye level of the guests, uh, which worked really nicely when I saw it in real life. Uh, this was actually the first enclosure I designed for this zoo because uh, I knew I wanted to get binturongs in there. So this is when I was sort of experimenting with trying to keep the uh, classic tecton style and then update it for the modern day. Um, so you'll see the sort of dual layer of white concrete with viewing in the middle of it, which is obviously a big trademark of theirs. Uh, and then what I wanted to do, I've, you can see that all the uh, all the barriers are glass. I just do that because it's I find that's the easiest way to to work because it's translucent, but you can still see it. Majority of this is going to be null barriers in the end. But I just put them in as glass and then change them to null barriers later once I'm happy with how everything's looking. Um, and then there's a dual uh, sort of a standoff barrier on the on the paths just from the game's inbuilt railings. I think this might be the first time I've ever use them on anything that isn't a stair but they actually look really nice on this wooden path so that keeps the gas back and then where you see the glass between the concrete at the moment that will be removed so that is just completely open so the guests have a completely unobstructed view of the uh, little binturongs doing their thing i've used a strangler fig as the main tree for them to climb which is something that you'll see in the binturongs natural habitat uh, unfortunately the strangler fig isn't climbable in this game but I solved that by, I mean, the way strangler figs grow in real life is by parasitizing other trees and growing around them. So I've just put another tree that is climbable inside the strangler tree, which you can see being uh, 
strangled, <laughs> uh, which they can use to climb, which is good. It's a fairly small enclosure, um, well above what they need to be 100% happy, uh, but um, once you put in all the climbing apparatus and the different terrain variations, etc., there is um, there's not actually that much space. I have to do a lot of work on this after I put the Vinterongs in because um, they were having trouble navigating quite a lot of it. But um, after some changes and a few modifications here and there, just to the inside, nothing nothing changed on the exterior. They're now uh, very happy, which is nice. Uh, just making a little bridge here so that the Vinterongs can get up to this tree and, and the keeper can get over there as well. As always, if you've got any ideas for improvements or anything that you think I could do better, please let me know in the comments and I will check them out and we'll see. And then they're going to have a dual level sleeping area at the back of the enclosure. So just putting the roof in here, under here, will be um, their shelter, which will have one way glass around it so the visitors can see them if they happen to be in there. And then above it is going to be a whole load of climbing uh, frames for them. Um, I mentioned at the, the start that the enclosure is the is sort of inspired by the shape of their little hairy ears <laughs> or ear tufts, I think they are. Um, so I also wanted to get that motif into the, um, the sides of the building as well. Uh, so I'll be building that in a second, which keeps the climbing area at the top uh, sort of safe so that they can't get out. Uh, if you're enjoying this, uh, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and uh, drop me a like, it really helps me grow the channel. I'm so glad Frontier have listened to the community feedback and made the changes to the Binturong after the whole Binturong <laughs> incident, because uh, yeah, it it did not look like a Binturong, and that really does, and I think the actual animations are, are so good on this animal when it hangs down by its tail and it just sort of snuffles about the forest, it looks, it looks really lifelike, I like it. As I've said before, I want the insides of the enclosures to look really natural and the outsides to look really unnatural because <laughs> I like the contrast. Um, and I've put a little window in here for the uh, the kids to be able to see the binturongs. Um, I see that in quite a lot of zoos. It's always cool when you're a kid if there's a little spot sort of just for you that's not really for the adults because um, I think the, the smallest kids have had trouble seeing over this wall. Um, so. There's two circular viewing windows for them, which I put a little bit of signage on later as well, uh, to make sure that everyone can, can see in. And I've made sure that the views of the, all their climbing apparatus are good from all the guest viewpoints. Um, and then they've got their shelter. Uh, they do want a bit of privacy and also the upper climbing area. It's quite You can still see them when they're up there, but they're very much in the distance. So um, they shouldn't have any complaints about uh, about being stressed, etc. Done a bit more work on the, the forest itself since last week as well. So putting in some of the falling leaves and a uh, one of the wind power things. <laughs> Don't know what they're called in the game. And then some more signage. Really struggled with the uh, the climbable area in this habitat. I got it up to 40 meters of climbing, which I think is the, the requirement for just one bin wrong. Obviously, I knew I'd need more than that when I bought uh, another one in. But for some reason, no matter how much more climbing I added, uh, the game just refused to recognize it. Happily, it showed it as green on the uh, the climbing view or the habitat view, whatever it's called. Uh, showed it as climbing, showed uh, direct access from all the other climbing to the new climbing. Everything was fine. Uh, Binturongs just completely ignored it. Um, so eventually I managed to get that to work. So again, they are 100% happy now. I put these little ropes in so that the vines look like they're actually attached to the branches. And uh, now we're building in the upper wall that I mentioned earlier. And then I've put the wall in here so that when they're climbing on the uh, broken cherry blossom tree they can't just jump out through the window <laughs> so I put some glass in here so both the windows have glass over them and then the rest of it apart from the shelter at the back with the one-way glass is completely open I really like the shape of this in the end it was a bit of a wacky sort of shape that I came up with I wasn't sure if it would work um, I guess it's not for me to say <laughs> but but I like it 
like I mentioned before, we want as many climbable objects in the habitat as possible to keep the binturongs happy. We try and hide some enrichment in trees as well, just to encourage them to do a bit more climbing. When they're down the little pit bit at the bottom where their food is, um, you can still see them from the guest paths, but obviously not as well as when they're climbing about, so we want them climbing as much as possible. I didn't even know you could recolour the heaters uh, until I built this, so I was quite pleased with that. And then we put a load of plants in, all Asian uh, forest plants, that's where the Binturongs live, forests in Southeast Asia. Um, so the inside of this enclosure is slightly more jungly than the rest of the the outside part of the forest so that it fits in with what they would have in their natural environment. I really like these rock pieces as well, I think they're really well designed. The Binturong is only the second animal from the Southeast Asia pack that I've been able to use uh, because the my previous zoo, London Zoo 1985, the only animal that they held back then that was in that pack was the Clouded Leopard, uh, which is a really cool animal. I really enjoyed using that in that zoo but it's really good to be able to use some more animals from that pack. Um, there will be some more of them in this zoo as well. I think this forest is coming together really nicely now uh, with the modernist structures in the fairly natural looking forest, apart from all the wooden paths everywhere, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's looking as we put more and more buildings in. Next week, we are gonna be doing either ring-tailed lemurs or red pandas depending on which one I fancy tackling next but yeah it's looking it's looking good I'm really pleased with it and just this last little bit of terrain painting here and that's the inside of the enclosure done just a few touch-ups to the outside and it'll be complete got some more custom signs made for the uh, for the binturongs as well I'm just putting in the kind of signage that the uh, you often see in zoos which are quite orientated towards children, simple understa um, understandable signs, giving them a little task to do to so try and find the binturongs and telling them a little bit about them that they like to live up in the trees. Uh, and yeah, that's the habitat built. Stick around for the cinematics, I really hope you like it uh, and enjoy the binturongs. I will see you next week. Thank you and bye.